Hi students and welcome to Preliminary Chemistry and Metals video number six. In the last one we had a little bit of a look at some of the important reactions involving metals and what we're going to do in this video is have a look at how we can use different types of chemical reactions to build up an activity series of metals. So the important thing when we start to try and look at metals is first of all we've already linked things like the um, presence as an ore or as an uncombined metal to its reactivity. We've also looked at the fact that reactivity also affects something like the extraction process. That is, the more reactive a metal, the more energy is required to extract it. So um, if it's a very reactive metal, it's likely to be a compound, not um, not an element, not found uncombined, and therefore it's also likely to, to have a fairly high energy requirement if we want to refine that metal and, and take it back out of its compound to decompose it. So what we want to do then is to get a little bit of an idea about the order of activity of different metals. And we can do that by observing the different reactions. So when we are placing the same metal, uh, different metals into the same substance, such as dilute hydrochloric acid, we can get a sense of how reactive the metal is by comparing the reaction rates or the reaction speeds with each of these other substances. And so this allows us to build up uh, a table of different metals in an order based on their reactivity. And in fact, this is what we've done you will get the opportunity to have a look at an activity series and you will find one in your textbook as well uh, but you will also find it expressed in terms of uh, re uh, standard reduction potentials in fact in most cases as far as metals are concerned metals tend to be oxidized rather than reduced and um, and that allows us to put metals into an order based on how readily they do that so this gives you a, a little bit of an overview of some of the different uh, metals that we can look at in terms of their reaction with things like uh, dilute acid or water. And of course, water either hot or cold. So when we look at something like copper, for, for instance, when we put copper with dilute acid, we often find no reaction. And likewise, we often find no reaction even when we, put, when we put it in water and we heat up the water. Sometimes even if we heat up the dilute acid a little bit too, we can still not get very much of a reaction. That, of course, is not the case if we put something like potassium in water. Potassium plus water um, equals reaction. So we get a very big reaction from potassium when we put that in water. And this is because potassium is a very reactive, so this is the active, most active metal up here, and this is the least active metal down here. And effectively, this table swings from aluminium um, to magnesium and so on. So this particular table gives us a little bit of an idea of the order in which metals react. Now it does one other thing too. We can also add a metal to a solution of another metal. If for example we were to add some magnesium into a solution of copper sulfate, what we would find is that because the magnesium is more reactive, it actually pushes the copper out of the solution and so we would actually be able to find copper coming out as a solid. However, if we were to add some copper to a magnesium sulfate solution, we would find no reaction. The copper is insufficient to actually push the magnesium out of solution. And as a consequence, this second reaction here would not occur. However, this first one would. Our activity series not only gives us a little bit of an idea about how different metals will behave in different types of solutions, but they also help us to build up an order of metals in relation to their interactions with other metal solutions. This is one of the things that we will do experimentally in class.
Thanks for watching.